we're back with another episode of Black Metal Promo. Today's videos covered the history of Wattayan, black metal bands from Sweden, before starting this video. If you love black metal, give a thumbs up to the videos, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell icon for new videos. Now let's get started. Wattayan is a Swedish black metal band, formed in Uppsala, Sweden in 1998. The band's name is taken from a song by the American black metal group Vaughn. Band members are known for their Satanist beliefs and for their live shows which often involve pyrotechnics, candles, rituals, blood, and animal carcasses. Which is the part of the normal Wattayan ritual. Wattayan identify themselves as theistic Satanists, Wattayan supports the misanthropic Luciferian order, John Nodvade's cult known for animal abuse and murder. Danielson believes that a belief system shared by all members is crucial for something as intimate and personal as music. In their now notorious Broadway performance, in Brooklyn in 2014, they doused audiences in animal blood, which caused some people to vomit. TMZ picked up the story and made it the subject of controversy. Several rumors have been spread that, members of the band have killed pigeons and even attempted to buy, from the homeless to supply them with blood for their concerts. Eric Danielson has made hints that this has happened in several interviews, but denied it in 2013. On March 7, 2019, the band's concert in Singapore was cancelled hours before the event was set to happen. It was authorized by the Info Communications Media Development Authority, due to security concerns regarding the lyrical content, Satanism, and blasphemy, as well as band previous concerts history. Wattayan guitarist Pell Forsberg, was denied entry when they arrived in the United States to tour with Morbid Angel. However, he blamed recent immigration law changes for the problem. During the time when the band was formed, Eric Danielson says, there weren't a lot of bands that seemed to take themselves seriously, and it wasn't very common for bands to consist of people who did more than just play music, that they liked and the same music as their idols. Wattayan have often been compared to dissection since the beginning of their career, or considered to be influenced by a fermod. Eric Danielson confirmed that Wattayan and dissection have a lot in common, both spiritually and musically. Nevertheless, he had to also add that questions like these are completely irrelevant with respect to the great abomination from which both Dissection and Wattayan emerged. Bands like Bathory, Mayhem, Merciful Fate, Death, SS, Samael, and Necrovore have been mentioned as influencer. Their first demo, Go Fuck Your Jewish God, was released on February 11, 1998 through an independent label. The demo's title reflects the band's intentions towards society. Demo consists of five songs, among them a cover of mediocre Dark Throne song, Unholy Black Metal is my favorite. Demo track R. One When Stars No More Shine. Two Midnight Possession. Three On Horns Impaled. Four Unholy Black Metal, Dark Throne Cover. Five The Mightiest of Male Dictions. Wattayan released their live album Black Metal Sacrifice in October 1999. It was recorded during their concert with Malign and Dark Funeral in Uppsala in 1999, organized by Wattayan and Grim Rune Productions. Sons of Fucking Hell is a cover of Blood Soil, the very unknown band vocalist Eric Danielson, participated in for a few years before Wattayan, but did not release anything with. And the track are The Walls of Life Ruptured On Horns Impaled Midnight Possession Angel Rape Sons of Fucking Hell. Essence of Black Purity. The Mightiest of Male Dictions. Following the live, Wattayan released the EP entitled The Essence of Black Purity, which was limited to 300 copies. The Essence of Black Purity is my favorite Wattayan song, because the riffs are some of the best they have ever come up with. They show how evil and melody can work together. The first studio album released by Wattayan, Rabid Death's Curse. This album was released on Drocker Productions in 2000. 
it was the band's first and only album on which they had two guitarists, from Rabbit Death's Curse on they were a trio. The song Rabbit Death's Curse contains an audio sample from the film, Friday the 13th. This album was ranked among the magazine's first 250 black metal album, 250 black metal albums you need to know. Album songs lyrics are based upon Satanism. German Horrible Eyes fanzine editor Ronald Ziegler described Rabbit Death's Curse as very Swedish, very death metal. Eduardo Rivadavia of AllMusic wrote, that Wattayan were at best, content to produce intentionally crude facsimiles of their cultural forefathers, such as Bathory and Mayhem, and at worst, incapable of producing original material. Rivadavia described the production as muddy and less than ideal. Eric Danielson stated that there were some minor mistakes in the productions, that could have been handled better, but on the other hand, it's all stuff that comes to your ears after listening to it over and over again. At least it doesn't sound like that fucking cheap cult black metal crap out there. I like the album, it's one of the best to come out of Sweden, it's just my sense of perfection that haunts me sometimes. Tracks on this album are 1. The Limb Crucifix 2. Rabid Death's Curse 3. On Horns Impaled 4. Life Dethroned 5. Walls of Life Ruptured 6. Agony Fires 7. Angel Rape 8. Mortem Sibi Conchisera A year later, they entered the studio again to record their second full-length album, Casus Lucifery, which features lyrics written by Necromorbus of Funeral Mist, who produced all their studio releases since The Essence of Black Purity, played bass live for them, MKM, of Antius and Scorn, of Catharsis. The album was remastered and reissued in October 2008 with a bonus track, a live cover of the song Matein by Vaughn that the band is named after. Eduardo Rivadavia writes in All Music that, the career of Sweden's Matein got a major boost with the release of Casus Lucifery in 2003, which crystallized the sound that would elevate the band, this album elevated Watain to the top of the global black metal pile, by combining Norwegian influences, with the more devilish blueprint foreshadowed decades earlier, by the Stockholm forefathers like Dissection, Marduk, and Dark Funeral. Rivadavia concluded his review by stating, I believe it is foolish to overlook any track on Casus Lucifery, with such a consistently high level of quality throughout, represents the majesty, power, and glory of black metal, as well as clearly illustrating Matein's ascension following its unveiling. This album contains the following tracks. 1 Devil's Blood 2 Black Salvation 3 Opus Dei, The Morbid Angel 4 Puzzles O.V. Flesh 5 I Am The Earth 6 The Golden Horns of Darish 7 From The Pulpits of Abomination 8 Casus Lucifery After this album, the stellar Dissension Infernal tour through Europe followed, alongside Secrets of the Moon and Averse Sephira. The band also toured through 18 countries, with Dissections on their two-month tour, Rebirth of Dissection in 2004. Dissection bassist Set Seiton, stepped in for live bassist Worth in Russia in 2005, and later became an official member of Watayan. In their performance on German party San Open Air in 2006, members of the band wore t-shirts of the NSBM band Absurd, leading to accusations that the band is a Nazi band. In an interview with the German metal magazine Metalde, Eric Danielson gave an evasive answer to questions about this incident, by adding, NSBM is a joke, a despaired approach by people who are incapable of understanding the perversion, and insanity of black metal. They're trying to appear extreme and are limiting themselves in their conception of society to something they don't like. Fuck the world. Black metal really doesn't have anything to do with society. In February 2007, the band released their third full-length album, Sworn to the Dark, via Season of Mist. The album received very positive reviews from music critics and has been described as the band's breakthrough album. The song Legions of the Black Light is dedicated to Dissection's vocalist John Notvade, who committed suicide in 2006. About.com's Chad Bowar described the album as a sinister and forbidding dose of black metal.
Latayan adds a lot of really catchy and melodic riffs to black metal, as well as some cool guitar counter melodies. He concluded, this is a really well-crafted album that's menacing, yet all music gave the album 4.5 out of 5 stars, saying that the band achieve a perfect balance between Venom or Darth Throne's outright savagery, and straightforward to Emperors, there are definitely more extreme, misanthropic, and adventurous black metal albums out there than Sworn to the Dark, but one that is more balanced and as contradictory as that sounds for nasty old black metal, entertaining and melodic. The track Storm of the Antichrist has an almost Marduk power approach. The Light That Burns the Sun is a shifting headbanger with some lovely guitar arrangements and killer breakdowns. This album made the number 13 position on Terrorizers, Extreme Metal Magazine, list of the top 40 black metal albums. According to All Music, it's one of their favorite metal albums of 2007. Track on this album are 1. Legions of the Black Light 2. Satan's Hunger 3. Wither Shins, Instrumental 4. Storm of the Antichrist 5. The Light That Burns the Sun 6. Sworn to the Dark 7. Underneath the Senate Half 8. The Serpent's Chalice 9. Darkness and Death 10. Dead But Dreaming, Instrumental 11. Stellar Vor Following the release of this album, they toured Europe with Celtic Frost, Creator, and Legion of the Damned. They headlined their first North American tour with Withered and Book of Black Earth in 2008. They played some shows alongside Eclipse Eternal and Chronosphere as well. In 2010, Watayan released a single for the song, Reaping Death in Two Formats, Picture Disc Vinyl with a cover of the song Chains of Death by Death SS, and a Just Leave CD with a cover of the song, The Return of Darkness and Evil by Bathory, this was followed by the album Lawless Darkness, released on June 7, 2010. Lawless Darkness cover art was made by Zbigniew M. Bilak, who also painted the Wild Hunt cover art. The album sold around 1,000 copies in the United States in the first week of its release, reaching number 42 on the top new artist albums, Heat Seekers chart. On April 21, the single Reaping Death was certified gold by the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry for sales over 10,000 copies, in the band's home country, Sweden. The album received very positive reviews from music critics, and the band won the Swedish Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Album for Lawless Darkness in 2011. According to Eric Danielson, the title of the album is a message about liberating oneself from all bonds. We must question everything around us, break down all barriers. Some call it salvation, and others liberation. Lawlessness is liberation. Danielson has also said that his band's previous album was the foundation stone of lawless darkness, because with Sworn we reached the kind of artistic self-knowledge needed for such an epic work. We did. He described the album as a thorough musical exploration of the dark side, describing its lyrics as the exploration, glorification, and adoration of the devil. Eternal adversary and enemy of the world as we know it. Expanding on the meaning behind the album, he said, the idea of lawless darkness has based upon the thought that light is an impulse of restriction and definition. Darkness, in term, is the absence of light, and therefore, the absence of the same restrictions. Note that darkness in this context is also used as a spiritual and archetypal concept, not only the physical absence of light during for example, nighttime. The darkness that we refer to is the primordial wellspring of chaos that is the abode of our gods, and unto which their children, the bloodline of fire shall return. Track on this album are 1 Death's Cold Dark 2 Malfitter 3 Reaping Death 4 Four Thrones 5 Wolves Curse 6 Lawless Darkness, Instrumental 7 Total Funeral 8 Hymn to Kyan 9 Kiss of Death 10 Waters of N A tour in support of the album took place in North America from November to December 2010 with support from Black Anvil and Withered. While it was originally intended to be a co-headlining tour with Behemoth, 
Behemoth dropped out due to vocalist and guitarist Nurgle's hospitalization for leukemia. The tour went ahead with Wattain as the headlining act and included stops in Quebec, Washington, California, Texas, and New York. The tour was titled The Lala States of Here Taika Tour. In February and March 2011, the band toured across Europe with Shining and Aesuth on the Death Holy Death Tour 2011. This tour included shows in Denmark, Poland, France, and Spain, as well as a five UK dates. In 2012, Wattain performed at Wacken Open Air and Bloodstock. The band participated in the US Decibel Tour, with Behemoth, and in Solitude and supported Behemoth again on their, The Satanist Tour of Australia with, Bolzer. On May 7, 2012 the band released a DVD and live album Opus Diaboli, 13 Years of Black Metal Magic directed by Yuan Both and Wattain. On 19 and August 20, 2013, The Wild Hunt was released in Europe and the United States, respectively, and featured elements of heavy metal, progressive metal, and doom metal on the album. A world tour that began in Uppsala on August 24 followed the release of the album. The cover art of the album was painted in oil and mixed materials by Zbigniew M. Bilak, who also designed the artwork for the Lawless Darkness album. Eric Danielson said about the album. The Wild Hunt has a very retrospective concept actually. It's very much about us looking back on this journey that we have been on for these last 15 years and the songs all relate, in one way or another, to very defined experiences and ideas, struggles, trials and tribulations that we have been through during this time. I don't mean to make it seem like it's an autobiographical concept, because it isn't really, it is in a certain sense, but it is still a very lofty and spiritual concept at the same time. It's a divine idea, the wild hunt really. And I found it a really inspiring concept to work with, although the individual songs in themselves we never really paid attention to the concept when we wrote them, it was more something that we realized afterward. Track on this album are One Night Vision, Instrumental Two De Profundis Three Black Flames March Four All That May Bleed Five The Child Must Die Six They Rode On Seven Sleepless Evil Eight The Wild Hunt Nine Outlaw Ten Ignum Veni Mitera, Instrumental 11 Holocaust Dawn In January 2015, Wattain, Mayhem, and Revenge toured the United States together on a black metal warfare tour. Mayhem and Wattain toured during part 2 of that tour with Rotting Christ in November 2015. In 2016, singer Eric Danielson and his work were subjected to the final segment of the documentary entitled, Music, Blood, and Spirit. Eric Danielson's life and work. The film is the third in a trilogy about people who devoted their lives to what society considers being unorthodox beliefs or lifestyles. In July 2016 the band announced that they would again tour with Mayhem in December. The tour was titled The Past is Alive and consisted of seven European dates. The bands performed their albums Casus Lucifery and A Mysterious Doom Sathanas in full. Wattain confirmed these would be the final times Casus Lucifery will ever be performed in full. On October 27, 2016 the band confirmed in a newsletter that their sixth full-length album was underway. On November 12, 2016 Wattain's vocalist Eric Danielson performed with Mortuary Drape at their 30th anniversary celebration show. In December 2016, a seven-split EP between Wattain and Mayhem titled Sathanas slash Lucifery Tour EP was available exclusively at this tour's shows, and featured a live song from each band recorded from the tour. On August 2, 2017, Wattain confirmed the release date of their long-awaited sixth full-length studio album, the title of which was later revealed as Trident Wolf Eclipse. This release was accompanied by a short album release tour in several selected venues in Europe. The first single titled Nuclear Alchemy from the new album, was released on October 31. Trident Wolf Eclipse was officially released on January 5, 2018 through Century Media Records, 
to generally favorable reviews from critics who noted that the album signaled a return to the band's earlier, more aggressive black metal style compared to their previous album The Wild Hunt. According to frontman Eric Danielson, the album title should be read as three separate words, which were chosen to represent symbolic concepts that the band consider central to their music. On the single there is also the B-side Beyond, originally by the Hungarian black metal band Tormentor but not on the album. The album's writing process was greatly influenced by the death of the band's close friend Salim Limici of the Devil's Blood, who committed suicide in 2014, and the band dedicated this album to him. Danielson has said that, there were a lot of very powerful things in our bond, and I think a lot of that force and that bond made it into the album, as a direct channeling of his ferocious spirit and fiery way of being. I definitely think those things are why Trident Wolf Eclipse sounds so ferocious. According to Danielson, the album continues the themes explored on Rabid Death's Curse, the band's previous album. They're very much about the exploration of something that appears to you as darkness, something that seems utterly chaotic and unknown. What they all have in common is that they explore the idea of empowerment and the attainment of force, all the band's members were involved in writing material for the album, but Danny Elson stated that it was, Pell Forsberg, who contributed most with shaping the album in terms of atmosphere and general approach. Hawken Johnson also wrote the material, as per usual, including what I consider to be one of the record's most central songs, towards the sanctuary with regards to the five-year gap between the release of The Wild Hunt and Trident Wolf Eclipse, he has also stated that we proceeded at our own pace and as a result broke our customary three-year cycle, which felt good, like the uprooting of all patterns eventually does. According to critics, the band's new album marks a dramatic change from its previous album, The Wild Hunt. Pop Matters compared the album to Marduk's Panzer Division Marduk, and described Watayan's style as straight for the throat Swedish black metal without any stylistic detours. Decibel described the album's sound as harsh and austere, and wrote that it was all ritualistic and instinctive furies. As for The Wild Hunt, Decibel wrote that it was an attempt at the immortal, but Trident Wolf Eclipse focused on. Tracks on this album are 1. Nuclear Alchemy 2. Sacred Damnation 3. Teufel's Reich 4. Fuhrer Diabolicus 5. A Throne Below 6. Ultra Pandemoniac 7. Towards the Sanctuary 8. The Fire of Power Deluxe Edition Bonus Tracks 9. Antichrist's Miracle 10. Lecarim's Circuitna, only available on vinyl box at Bonus 7 EP Watayan postponed their planned performances at Hellfest 2020, Las Vegas, and their Wall Purchase Night concert in Uppsala cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. These performances were meant to mark the end of the Trident Wolf Eclipse album cycle. As part of their campaign to counter the pandemic's impact, the band independently released an exclusive seven-track live cassette tape titled, Corona Mortis, on July 2, 2020, which is a one-take rehearsal recorded at their headquarters. The tape is limited to a limited number of pre-orders and will never be reprinted again. The band announced on August 5, 2021 that they had signed with Nuclear Blast Records and had entered Necromorbus Studio to begin work on their seventh studio album, which is expected to be released in the spring of 2022. To support this album, the band planned a U.S. co-headlining tour with Mayhem. However, the band was unable to begin the tour due to visa issues. The band announced on February 3, 2022, that the Agony and Ecstasy of Watayan album would be released on April 29. It is the band's first album to not feature founding member Hawken Johnson playing drums, but he did contribute in the songwriter process with the rest of the lineup. In Ecstasy's In Night Infinite, the opening track, we see all-out aggression and venomous intent, kicking off the album in a bloody manner. It contains all of the savagery described above, plus some killer lead guitar work that threatens to spiral out of control at any moment. There are tracks such as Serimosa and We Remain, where the pace is deliberately slowed, thus raising the atmospheric impact through judicious use of synths, unless my ears are playing tricks on me. In the case of the former, 
it has a heavy stomp and a very dark feature that allows vocalist, Danny Elson, to take center stage somewhat while the music churns evilly in the background. On the latter, we have two guest vocal performances by Farid Alimachi, Molasses, X The Devil's Blood, and Gottfried Amon, Pega, X In Solitude. In terms of music, there is a much stronger doom influence. The Howling, the first single from the album. It's another excellent tune, and keeps the momentum going, but throws in a few paces and feel changes to keep it from falling into monotony. Track Funeral Winter and The Black Cunt, are better than a lot of black metal released in the past few years. Track on this album are as follows. 1. Ecstasies in Night Infinite. 2. The Howling. 3. Serimosa. 4. Black Cunt. 5. Leper's Grace. 6. Not Sun Nor Man Nor God. 7. Before the Cataclysm. 8. We Remain. 9. Funeral Winter. 10. Septentrion. So this is the history of Watayan, thank you I hope you enjoy the videos, if you enjoy please like the videos, and subscribe to the black metal promo.